So we've come to the Dower House in Heaton Park, which is the centre of Manchester and District Beekeepers Association. How do you think beekeeping's changed over the last 10 years? Um, I think the most remarkable thing is its, it's profile's gone up enormously. Um, when I started beekeeping here in Manchester, Manchester beekeepers probably had about 40 members, 45 members, something in that order. We've now got 270 something members. So there's that many more people um, potentially keeping bees in the Manchester area. So that's really great. That's great for food producing, it's, it's fantastic. So um, this area of Presswich, Blakely yes. uh, and the surrounding bits, can you tell us what the bees will be feeding on in this type of area? In this type of area, um, a lot of it is, um, if you start off in the spring, they're actually, they need a lot of things that are grown in gardens, so it's things like your spring bulbs, hellebores, um, things like that, that we, can, we all love to come up first thing in the year because it's, it's that exciting thing that's going to happen later on so and if you see an insect on it that's really nice <laughs> yeah we love all that so that's the spring spring bulbs then they move into um, tree pollen when the trees start to come out so you've got all your um, horse chestnut trees which have got fantastic species of trees in the Heaton Park area anyway um, and then they move on to your normal um, garden plants, which everyone can help with. Uh, we can all plant a little bit of something. They love um, buddleia, they love lavender, um, borage is a fantastic plant. Um, so the feeding on that, then when you start to get through to later on in the summer, about this sort of time and at the moment we're in mid-August so there in this area one of the big um, plants that they love very much and I know for a lot of people it's a weed but it's very important for pollinating insects and that's the Himalayan balsam plant which you can see just behind me here um, that is extremely important for our bees in this April. Um, can't stress that enough. Then when we get when we get past the summer months, you're then um, looking at things like ivy, um, which is another one and that, that, that takes us through towards towards the end of the year and then the cycle starts again next year. Uh, I, I, I do fear yeah. that uh, we may be able we may be feeding them this uh, winter. Yeah. Um, this, I've got three, we've got three good colonies, yeah. uh, I'm just hoping and praying that they can uh, at least produce one full super yeah. and be working on another. It looks as though it's going that way, it's just yeah. fingers crossed. We've got a young uh, colony at the moment where we've bred it from uh, an egg and uh, whether she'll make it, I don't know, but it's up to her. But uh, it just depends on, on the weather. I mean, I've never known a, 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 a winter that's been so damp and a, a spring that's been so damp and the bees haven't been able to get out. I think that most beekeepers I spoke to, even in Scotland last week, the same problem. So it's this, this particular year, as opposed to 2014, which was yeah. fantastic, wasn't it? It was, yeah. I mean, fortunately, we had stocks from last year yeah. to, to extract this year, yeah. but definitely next year, this year, we won't be able right. to do much extracting right. at okay. all. I think we, we lost uh, at least 80% of our colonies. Yeah. You know, due, due, to, due to this damp. Yeah. So, bad, yeah. Right. you know, that's what bees will do. They go out and forage, come yeah. back soaked, and yeah. it soon travels in, yeah. in the colony. Yeah. But uh, if you do have a couple of pounds spare, we'd like to see if we can grab on just to put it in the beer, so we have a little touch of a uh, sulphur in it. But yeah, no problem, no problem. You're right. Uh, what do you want us to donate? Yeah, no, do you want honey well, we, water? Oh, honey from your hives. Just yeah. a couple of pounds. Yeah. With all the goodness of Kurzel Vale. Well, yeah. it'd be predominantly uh, balsam. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> beer that we make, yeah. feel inspired and want to go and keep bees. Yeah. How should they set about it? What should they do? Well, um, I wouldn't recommend anyone try to keep honeybees without actually doing a, some sort of beekeeping course and get yourself um, informed, well informed before you start. We do training courses here and there are other training courses so if you live further afield 
from Manchester. I'm sure if you Google in beekeeping courses, something will come up in your area. Jack here is going to show us the conglomerator, which sounds like something from Robot Wars. <laughs> well, it's sort of is, really. Yeah. Eh? And how he makes this particular drink from it. So follow us here. It's a bit noisy. Basically, what you've got, you've got a stainless steel box. You put your frames in there. I've got two sauces of meat, four heated at the back, and one steamer at the front. It melts down into the middle, comes out at the front. And from that, we'll show you what happens. We just walk over to the table. Basically, what we've done, we've rendered them frames that have been extracted down. Um, this is the honey water that has come from the conglomerator. This is wax, which I'm, I'll scoop off, and that could be reformulated and what I would do with the uh, honey water I will strain that through a muslin bag and then I will put that into a pan I'd heat it to about 105 degrees C and leave it at that temperature for two whole minutes then I would put that solution into a fermenting bin that's got four gallons of cold water round about 15 degrees C. Now that will cool that and then I would just mix it up and then you've got to use champagne yeast on, on it and that will convert the sugars in that honey water into alcohol. Now to have mead called mead you've got to let that ferment for 17 years. I ain't gonna live 17 years so what we'll do we'll just make beer with it after about three months. That should be decent and a, a decent pint then. Right, we we'll just need to try that sometime. Well, we'll do. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Hope it tastes nice. Remember children, don't try this at home. <laughs> and this apiary is actually open to the public to come and have a look, is it, on a Sunday afternoon? We're here every Sunday afternoon throughout the year, um, unless it falls on Christmas Day or something like that. Um, between the hours of 12 and 4 oh, yeah, yeah. in the summer, and 12 and 3 in the winter months so when the clocks change it's 12 and 3. We've always got two lovely volunteers on and they'll answer any questions that you you want to um, you want to ask them about beekeeping or courses or anything they'll answer them for you. Great thank you. So we've just come away with four pounds of honey from the Dower House which is the first contribution to the Manchester Honey Beer.